Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to talk to you this morning about the 2021 Needs Assessment Report for RISE Windsor Essex. My name is Tash Lintesky, and I'm the Manager of Projects and Research at Workforce Windsor Essex. Workforce Windsor Essex is the Workforce and Community Development Board whose mission is to lead regional employment and community planning for the growth of the strong and sustainable workforce in Windsor Essex. We are a founding partner of RISE and we are excited to be a part of this project for the next two years. We are responsible for creating the local needs assessment report for Windsor Essex that assesses the local entrepreneurial ecosystem. We're assessing what works, what doesn't work, what needs to change, and how. Last year, we were able to release our baseline needs assessment of 2020. Our key recommendations included increased entrepreneurial co-op experiences for students that are possibly in a STEM program or any other program that doesn't have business built into it. The creation of female-only cohorts within entrepreneurial services so that stronger networks are able to be built increasing the number of female advisors and investors that work within these entrepreneurial programs, the creation of an open workspace in our local community that's open to everyone and all entrepreneurs in Windsor Essex, increasing the services for newcomers that are looking to become an entrepreneur and improving the data collection so we can create better informed metrics and goals around our local ecosystem. We are excited to announce that we have our 2021 report completed and available for view today. The goals of this guide are to share up-to-date information on the current entrepreneurial ecosystem in Windsor, Essex, identify challenges for both entrepreneurs and the community around struggles for female entrepreneurs, showcasing the successes of both the community programs and female entrepreneurs, and recommend community-based initiatives to further support and expand our local ecosystem. During the creation of these reports, we host consultations with stakeholders, including local entrepreneurial service providers. We also consult with female entrepreneurs. This year, we were able to do a group virtual consultation as well as conduct a survey with over 30, sorry, 40 entrepreneurs uh, locally. We were also able to conduct consultations with provincial service providers, including organizations in Ottawa, Waterloo, and Halton to identify best practices from other regions. All of these consultations took place in November and December of 2020. So why Windsor Essex? So the reason we applied for the Women's Entrepreneurship Strategy Grant and wanted to create the RISE Network is because Windsor has often been known as, um, many of you heard that we were the worst place for women in all of Canada, and it's um, a negative stigma around being an entrepreneur from Windsor Essex. So we wanted to change that narrative and identify possible improvements that we can make in the community. So much of this data that we have collected this year is from between 2018 to 2020. So as you can see in the chart on the left, this is showing the pandemic's impact on entrepreneurship and employment in our region. As you can see, there's been quite a decrease for both private sector and public sector employees, as well as for those that are self-employed, with those choosing self-employment um, greatly decreasing between December 2019 and December 2020. The chart on the right uh, further emphasizes the need to encourage uh, entrepreneurship amongst both males and females in rural regions and create better supports for uh, female entrepreneurs overall. This chart also identifies uh, the impact and requirement for a lot of entrepreneurs to also have additional employment um, to better their income. And this is especially prevalent for females in the Windsor area. We wanted to highlight within our report, the profile of a local entrepreneur. Uh, we know there's a lot of diversity amongst our entrepreneurs and that no one's experience is exactly the same. Through our local survey of female entrepreneurs, we were able to further identify the diversity within their businesses and the women owners themselves. We see that the age of our owners um, varies with many of them being between 30 and 54 years old. Um, they have different backgrounds, whether they were immigrants or newcomers um, and self-identifying as visible minorities or indigenous persons. The majority of businesses have less than four employees with many uh, self-employed people having zero paid help. 
the majority of businesses have been operating for the less, sorry, less than five years, um, with some in operation for more than 10 years. And the annual revenue for the majority is less than 10,000, with still quite a few reaching over 100,000 in their annual revenue. Some of the challenges that were identified specifically for service providers of entrepreneurial services includes virtual overload. A lot of service providers opened up their business hours to include weekends and I'm sorry, weekend and evening offerings uh, to better align their schedules with their clients. However, this placed a lot of stress on their staff with having them working a lot more hours than typical. Um, between the staff and their clients, there was a lot of Zoom fatigue, which I'm sure a lot of you are still feeling um, very early on. Um, there was just a very much an overwhelming need to be on Zoom constantly. Um, and a lot of people uh, found that to be very draining. Additionally, um, there was lower attendance at virtual events and networking opportunities because of this. Limitations in the program specifically um, aligns for those that um, possibly had a physical workspace for their clients that were looking to develop their products or prototypes for their business, as well as programs that specifically had a goal of leading to a pitch competition for their clients. A lot of investors are also feeling that Zoom fatigue, so it's hard to do virtual pitch competitions with Zoom fatigue and that disconnect between investors being felt. Additionally, we've seen an increase in hobbyists becoming business owners, and this is great. It's a great time with everyone at home that are able to focus on their goals and new ideas that they have for a business, but service providers want to make sure that those starting a business from home or out of their garage are following any business regulations um, and not finding any liability issues or food safety issues, depending on what their business requires. For entrepreneurs, there are quite a few new challenges specifically due to the pandemic. Um, well, we've seen a lot of new um, grants and loan and service programs specifically for women. Um, we're also finding that eligibility for a lot of these programs really limits specifically female owned businesses um, as they often require entrepreneurs to have employees, high revenue levels or have been operating for um, quite a few many years, which I've seen uh, on the previous slide doesn't often align with what female entrepreneurs um, follow as a business plan. For those that are operating um, potentially with a physical space, they've had to pivot that. Um, that can potentially be a very costly pivot for many. Um, for those that are now working from home, they might be working um, from the kitchen table surrounded by children doing virtual homeschool. Maybe there's dogs in the background. Um, it's getting really hard to focus and find your set business hours when you're working in that space from home, um, in addition to possible internet issues uh, and caregiving responsibilities. The quickly changing regulations coming down from the province and from local restrictions, um, again, is having a lot of entrepreneurs to pivot very quickly um, and possibly in costly ways. However, the constant changing regulations don't give people a lot of heads up. And when things change for the worse, um, it can be very draining on those entrepreneurs that are trying to survive through these times. Investment priorities have also changed. There's a lot of emphasis now on technology-based innovation um, and investors are also focusing on businesses that have already proven um, that they can have high revenue levels and they've invested in them before. So this can be a limitation for smaller companies or newer companies to find investment locally. Again, caregiving responsibilities um, places a lot of pressure typically on women, especially those that are working from home right now. Um, it's an added stress for many. It can affect your productivity. It can affect um, the workplace culture that you're trying to start within your company um, and can just be very draining, which again leads to mental health issues. Um, we know entrepreneurs have very, very stressful careers already, um, throwing on top of that pandemic and quarantine and limitations within their business. A lot of people are feeling mental health struggles and we need to have more support specifically for entrepreneurs to help that. Uh, the last challenge we identified specifically for female entrepreneurs was the need for a community connection. Um, with everything gone virtual, working from home, everybody separated, there's a need for entrepreneurs to really connect or specifically disconnect with their peers. They wanna be offline. They need to find ways 
to share best practices, to share their struggles, um, and we need a good space to do that. We do, however, have a lot of successes um, that we've seen over the last year. It hasn't all been bad. Um, some of the main successes specifically for entrepreneurship service providers and entrepreneurs is the increase in interest from female clients for services. We have a lot of new programs that have started in the last year specifically targeting um, female entrepreneurs. So we're seeing these services um, being used very widely in the community. We also have an increase in female advisors for these programs, which we've seen um, also increases the number of female clients that are looking to work with these organizations. Um, virtual opportunities, well, yes, can be sometimes draining, have offered a lot of um, adaptability for clients. They're able to change their work schedules um, to align with any possible family needs or other employment. There's more opportunities for evening and weekend working. Um, it also removes transportation and geography barriers for some that maybe weren't able to travel from Leamington or Kingsville previously to go to events in Windsor or work with service providers in Windsor. There's no longer that barrier there. We have also seen some great successful pivots. Um, many businesses have moved to becoming e-commerce. They've adapted uh, what products they sell. Um, we've even seen some opportunities for service providers to uh, support pivot ideas of their clients with possible kid sitting opportunities um, where during uh, events for parents. There's kind of a simultaneous event um, for children virtually, whether that's through yoga classes or painting or magic shows. Um, we've been able to kind of invest in our local entrepreneurs um, that are working with children in that way. Some new changes that programming have done uh, that many organizations are looking to continue. Um, again, is that flexibility, those longer work uh, business hours, more one-on-one -on -one virtual support. Well, yes, training for many staff, um, it does have an increased benefit for their clients. Uh, we've seen an increase in one-on-one -on -one support, specifically with completing grant opportunities and learning about opportunities to pivot a business. There's a lot of unique challenges being faced and more individualized support is being provided. There's also new support options, again, with those um, increased opportunities with financial support, new grants and loans specifically for women. Some of the knowledge needs that we've identified um, both through needs based on the pandemic changes as well as just general business knowledge is financial uh, knowledge, um, including financial literacy and reporting, um, how to create business plans, how to build your community when we're all working virtually, um, technical tools, um, so specific software, um, how to move your business um, to become e-commerce, how to use new marketing tools, um, a need to learn about soft skills, including um, soft, sorry, including social media, marketing, and leadership. Um, and again, working on those grant applications, a lot of women this year have struggled to complete those um, accurately, being able to showcase exactly which reporting documents were needed, um, the needs of their business, and aligning with that eligibility is really important. The main recommendations that we were able to develop this year um, include responsive programming. So again, making sure that all programs designed for women um, have input from women in place. We wanna make sure that there's flexible timelines um, and that these programs are responsive to the needs of all women including those in underrepresented groups. When developing these programs, we also need to make sure that we have pre-consultations conducted and our, um, the needs of the community validated before we start um, creating curriculum and content to make sure that the goals of the women in line uh, are in line with the goals of the businesses. Uh, there's a need for more financial support regarding eligibility um, and support for completing applications. Like I said, many of these new programs didn't align exactly with um, the common characteristics of female businesses. So making sure there's financial support that doesn't require matching dollars or high revenue businesses, um, as well as that one-on-one -on -one support um, through possibly an application helpline um, or a virtual assistant to assist in completing those applications. There are many opportunities um, for service providers to take on, including mental health support. Um, this can be in the form of having a professional advisor that can 
help specifically entrepreneurs and specifically female entrepreneurs with mental health struggles um, or having the right knowledge to have referrals to other proper service providers locally that can better support the entrepreneurs. Additionally, we need to make sure that when we have events, um, including this lovely event that we're all attending today, that there's a really high value on it. Women, again, are feeling a lot of Zoom fatigue. They have a lot of priorities and new responsibilities. They need to make sure that the time they're using to sit down at their computer has a high value for themselves and their businesses um, and isn't taking away from any of that work time. This can be done through more collaborations to kind of get bigger bang for your buck with different partners. Um, working on one event simultaneously, as well as making sure that there's recordings of these events so that women can watch them later on, either as a refresher or just for the first time because they weren't able to watch live. The really important recommendations that I want to highlight are specifically around the goals of our ecosystem. So these are things that we want to make sure um, that Windsor Essex is supportive for female entrepreneurs, has a strong ecosystem, of service providers and organizations that are rooting for these female entrepreneurs and that everything is responsive to our localized need. So the first need is a scaling program specifically for women. As I've outlined, a lot of uh, female-owned businesses are slower to grow. They have uh, very few employees and often lower revenue levels, so we need something that is specific for women that are looking to grow but at their own pace. We want to encourage students, specifically international students, to become entrepreneurs. Um, this can be done specifically through education and local businesses supporting the idea of formalizing opportunities for international students that uh, want to become business owners as they graduate, that we're supporting the idea that this um, contributes to them uh, acquiring their permanent residency, not just through the traditional route of regular employment. We also want to replicate our successful programs. So we've seen a lot of new programs coming out in the last few years, including Venture Women from the Epicenter, um, Innovation Catalyst through WeTech Alliance. Um, many of these are pilot programs. So we want to make sure that we have local investment, not just federal short-term investment in these programs that are highly successful. Um, so we can replicate them, we can grow them, we can have larger clientele um, accessing them. These are really important programs um, that are only offered locally. We want to see them grow. We want to see our ecosystem as a whole grow. So we need to make sure that we have local investment, whether that's from municipalities, organizations being able to um, have base funding so that we can see these programs have legitimacy, national recognition, as well as supporting those local women the best way possible. We also need to have an online directory um, to better support service providers um, that are being um, reached out to from female entrepreneurs that are looking for support. A lot of times it can be very confusing to find the exact support and service provider you're looking for. So an online directory of services available in Windsor Essex would help women to kind of um, sift through that information themselves and find the right referral um, to cut down on the lead time that we're finding um, is facing a lot of female entrepreneurs and slowing down their momentum and growth. So I'm very excited to announce that this report is releasing today. It's available at workforcewindsoressex.com slash rise. Um, all the information is there, including last year's report. Um, so you can assess how we've grown in the last year, what new challenges, what new successes, and how we've used our past recommendations to improve our local ecosystem. So thank you all, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.